What if I want to play Dark Souls 3? Before I play 1 and 2. Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. So recently I started playing Dark Souls 3, and I was enjoying it enough that I got to thinking about doing a review about it. Now the problem is, this game isn't exactly new, and there are YouTubers who have made their whole career on talking about Dark Souls, so I wasn't sure what I could possibly add to the conversation, and then it hit me. I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, think about it, all the reviews and discussions I've seen on Dark Souls so far are all from people who have a pretty good understanding of the series, have played the previous games, and talk about it in reference to the other games in the series. I don't really have that background, so I thought it might be interesting to make a review for people who know nothing about Dark Souls, except that it's a series that suffers a bit from Rick and Morty syndrome and has a reputation for being harder than a diamond armadillo on a Cialis bender. You're both pieces of shit. Yeah, I can prove it mathematically. Actually, let me grab my whiteboard. This has been a long time coming anyway. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I am a Bloodborne fan, but I'm going to try to keep comparisons to Bloodborne to a minimum since, like I said, this is a review for people who know nothing about the Souls series. So with that, let's get started. So I start up the game, and the first thing I notice is that my worry about having to play the previous games in order to understand the story was immediately soothed, because I don't think I would fully understand what the f*** was going on even if I had. I actually really like the character creator and class setups in this game. Uh, choosing a particular class affects your starting equipment, skills, and level, but you're not locked into that choice, as you can specialize later on down the line if you find something else that works for you. Uh, for example, I started off as a knight, beat the first boss on my first try, then got royally stuck before the second boss, and decided to restart with some other classes to see if I had any better luck. Eventually, I realized that the thief class starts with a melee weapon and shield, but also has a bow, a fast dodge roll, and can stunlock most enemies until they die as as long as you have more stamina than they have health. Once I figured that out and did a bit of grinding, I cruised through the first three bosses and a couple of optional bosses without a whole lot of trouble. That's a huge part of this game's appeal to me. Uh, the combat system, while not particularly intuitive, is massively adaptable. Unlike most RPGs where leveling into different skills doesn't actually change combat all that much, Dark Souls 3's system encourages you to specialize by having weapons that complement certain playstyles locked off behind certain skill levels. For example, I play as a character with a lot of points in dexterity and stamina, but not a whole lot and strength, meaning I can barely hold a sword, attacking with anything two-handed is slow and clumsy, and my shield doesn't absorb as much damage as it could, but I attack rapidly with daggers and knives, do a lot of bonus damage with a bow, and can dodge roll quickly around enemies to maneuver through and around attacks without taking much damage. I have yet to try a magic or long-range focused character, because I can only assume that that's just for the hardest of core players, since magic doesn't regenerate on its own like stamina does, and you need a few seconds to cast spells or fire a bow, seconds during which any self-respecting boss and most man melee enemies are probably going to close the distance between you and them and redecorate their foyer with your squishy bits. See, combat revolves around not just maintaining your health, but also maintaining your stamina levels. Attacking, dodging, and sprinting all use up stamina, and when it's drained, you have to wait for it to recharge before you can take any further action. Each individual weapon also has its own special skill that can be used, but it depletes your magic meter, and like I said before, magic doesn't regenerate on its own, so it's usually best to save that for when it's necessary. You also have two flasks that are automatically assigned to your quick select one that restores health and one that restores magic. You start off with three charges for the health flask and one charge for the magic flask, but you can actually subtract charges from one to add to the other. They can also be upgraded to give you more health or magic with each use, or to give you more uses in general. They also take a second or two to use, since your character actually has to stop and drink out of them when you use them, which adds an extra layer to combat because you have to create your own breathing room in order to take the time to heal. Eventually, I settled into a pattern that worked for me. Enter a new area, find a vantage point to pick off a few weak enemies with the bow, and if I had any arrows left, chip off a few hit points from any larger enemies lurking around nearby, and then more often than not, get knocked off the ledge I was standing on by something that ran up behind me while I was doing the first two steps. Yeah, if I had to sum up exploration in one sentence, it would be... It's right behind me, isn't it? Enemies tend to be stationed behind doors or around corners, and rather than waiting nicely for you to come to them, they see you pass by and decide to enthusiastically introduce your heroically intact butt cheeks to the business end of a halberd. Even if you do manage to not let anything sneak up on you, it's pretty easy to get swarmed in this game, and if you get surrounded or cornered by even two or three of the weaker enemies, odds are good they're going to bat you around like a pinata full of meat until you die. 
For the most part though, enemy placement's pretty intuitive, weaker enemies in the starting area, and if you walk into a new place only to have a single enemy immediately reduce you to a vaguely human-shaped smear on the pavement with naught but a mighty heft of their gargantuan nutsack, you probably went the wrong way. See, this game has a weird habit of placing massively overleveled enemies down random halls, and they often look just like the standard enemies you've been massacring by the dozen to get there, so your only way of finding out that they're going to annihilate you is by recreating that one Bugs Bunny cartoon where Sylvester tries to fight a kangaroo. All this is to say that combat is difficult, unforgiving, and punishing, but never once did I feel like it was unfair. Except when they put a bunch of enemies at the bottom of a ladder that's too tall to jump from, so all you can do is daintily lower your butt into their waiting jaws like it's feeding time at the alligator exhibit. Usually, if you find yourself dying a lot, it's because you're either underleveled and need to grind some XP, or explore some side paths for better gear before proceeding, or you're not thinking tactically enough and end up getting overwhelmed by sheer numbers. That's what makes this game so rewarding. I, I mean, I died a lot. Okay, I died basically incessantly, but it was almost always in a way that could have been avoided if I had approached the scenario differently. I will say I'm not a big fan of having your maximum health decrease when you die. I mean, it only decreases once, but in order to restore full maximum health, you have to use a certain item or defeat a boss, and it feels like a bit of an arbitrary punishment for trying to learn the game's mechanics. Eventually, I started hoarding the restoration items and using them as emergency pick-me-ups if I had a boss or a particularly hard enemy on the ropes and had used up my regular healing item. You also gain a currency called souls with each enemy killed, and these are used to upgrade equipment and skills, as well as buy consumables, weapons, and armor, and you drop all of them every time you die. If you return to where you died, you can pick them back up again, but if you die before you can get there, you lose them for good. Uh, fortunately, with the way enemies scale, and the fact that they always respawn every time you use a checkpoint, you can always find an area that's not too hard, but not too easy to grind for XP. Which is good, because costs to level up get absolutely obscene pretty fast for how little each individual skill point actually raises your overall stats. Unfortunately, finding better equipment than what you already have can be a bit touch and go. I found armor that was better than what I was wearing reasonably frequently, but I basically played through the entire game using the weapon that I started with, and just upgrading it at the blacksmith whenever I was able to. So to summarize combat before moving on, it has a steep learning curve, but if you're not afraid to fight the first boss a couple of times, eventually you'll find a class and a combat style that suits your preferred playstyle, and then it's just a method of optimizing and leaning into that method. Experiment. That's what's so awesome about this system. I actually can't wait to finish the game with my high speed, high stamina character so that I can try out a heavy combat or magic focus character and see how long it takes me to give up. But I think it's worth mentioning how pretty this game is. You don't really get to admire it too much for the most part while you're actually playing because you're too busy carefully inching forward just in case something's sneaking up on you or sneaking up in front of you while you're looking to make sure nothing's sneaking up behind you. But yeah, look how gorgeous this game is. There's a lot of detail put into selling this rundown, decayed world. It really does feel like you're exploring a place that used to be thriving, and now it's just dead. That's a hard atmosphere to make work, but it really works here. Sometimes I'll clear an area of enemies just so I can wander around looking at the environment. There's also a huge attention to detail and making the world feel connected and seamless. I remember at one point walking to the edge of a rundown bridge, and there were all these guys who appeared to have died while praying. I looked across the gap where the bridge collapsed to see what they were praying to, and there was a dead dragon further down. About four or five hours later, I climbed a tower in a totally different area and wandered around up there for a minute before realizing I had ended up on on the other side of that gap was near the dead dragon and could see the praying corpses from there. That's really cool, and it's something you really don't see very often, or at least not done this well. You can also invade and be invaded by other players, usually at the worst possible moment and almost always when you've just gained enough souls to level up and are just trying to make it back to the last fast travel point to do so. I'll be honest, I completely despise this mechanic. Especially because it still happens, even when I turn off online matchmaking. Is it too much to ask that I just be left alone to play my depressing game about the inevitability of death and the inescapable reality of decay as an intrinsic part of existence? I mean, come on guys, it's rude. Anyway, yeah, I really hate this, because people tend to grief you in difficult locations, and unless you have a specific item and the time required to activate it, enemies will only attack you and not the invader, so 9 out of 10 times, you might as well just give up the second they show up since you can't really run away, and the odds are good they're only invading because they know they're at a high enough level that you won't be much of a problem for them. And no offense, but if you're one of these people, f*** you, f*** anyone who even likes you, f*** your whole family, and I hope you slip and fall down an up escalator. Fortunately, invasions happen infrequently enough that it didn't turn me off from the game, but I got pretty I'm close, I'll tell you that much. I even got the item that lets you invade other players at will indefinitely, and not only have I never used it, but I don't think I ever will. Despite all this, 
I really do recommend this game, even if you haven't played any of the others in the series. I mean, I haven't, and I still enjoyed it. I think the difficulty curve wasn't quite as high as I was expecting uh, once I figured out which class and skill set worked for me. It's also a really pretty game just to even look at. It made me want to play the earlier games just so that I can experience this world a little bit more and see what else is out there. If you're like me and haven't really touched any of these games or are hesitant to do so because of the atmosphere around them, I hope this video gave you a little motivation to check it out. I know Dark Souls is basically a meme at this point, but I really do think this one is worth taking a look at, even if it's not the kind of game you usually play. Take a look. Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more weekly reviews. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.